Kevin Wilmot. Uh, again, thank you guys for, for checking the film. I think you guys were obviously a really great audience. Um, uh, any, any questions I can I can I can answer here, or if you guys probably want to know what the hell we were thinking about. <laughs> Just all the way back now. Well, you know, I, I, you know, as you know, as, as a kid, you know, growing up at that time, you know, we saw all those those bad science fiction films, and they were good to us back then, right? But, but uh, you know, the corny special effects and and all that stuff, and it just, uh, um, you know, it, it it just seemed to lend itself well to trying to uh, tell a story about you know black folks in 1939 trying to. Solve the Negro problem and 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 you know building a rocket ship and, and going off you know and uh, so it so that really lent itself well to the the budget and the that we had and the you know which was no budget at all uh, and uh, and and just kind of trying to then merge that the satiring that 1950s 60s you know spaceship genre of Rocket silver bullet, silver bullet rocket ship movies, you know, um, and then and then merging that with uh, arriving here today and and all the bizarre things that are happening to us in the in the present, you know. So it just seemed like a good fusion of, of the two kind of crazy worlds. A lot of fun, you know, making fun of that old sci-fi stuff, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a sci-fi geek, you know. I, I loved, you know, as a kid, you know, you know, sci-fi was one of the few places where black folks would show up occasionally, you know, and uh, remember Ivan Dixon would show up on Twilight Zone, Twilight Zone and Rod Serling was, was a big influence on me. Uh, you know, Rod Serling is, was just, he dealt with everything on that show, and uh, I don't think it's given credit for, uh, you know, teaching us all the things we kind of, you know, take for granted today in a lot of ways, so uh, that was a big, Twilight Zone was probably the big influence, you know, more than anything. Let me let me have this guy here come up here, Mister. Give everybody, everybody, give him a hand. Great, great, great. Thank you all for coming. It was such a pleasure to make the movie. I, I just want to say, and it strikes me, I've only seen a, a couple times, a handful of times. Maybe this is my third time, I think. But um, it stri it strikes me more and more uh, how brilliant the how brilliant the, the screenplay is itself, and I just wanted to give some props to Kevin for doing it. The whole commentary between the, the field hands and the, the house slaves and the, and the devices that control us that we let in our heads, and celebrity, and, and what it means to be a, a person that's amongst a, a society and trying to find your humanity, but that, all that stuff really it just comes out to me more and more, so I just wanted to give you some props for that. <laughs> One of my students at KU, so he's still trying to get a good grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Two questions. Uh, number one, how did you get West Studios to do that? And the uh, second question is, uh, there's an African American uh, professor on the East Coast, uh, he's at Rhode Island, he's interested in time travel, who believes this to be a possibility. Wow. And I was just wondering if you knew about him or you were interacting with him? You know, I'll take your first <coughs> question first. No, I, I, I don't know about him. That's, that's fascinating. I think that uh, for me, the time travel element of the movie is is one of the things I'm kind of the most, you know, interested in now when I, when I kind of watch the film. You know, um, I was had an interview yesterday and, uh, and we were talking about the time travel element of the film and um, and it's kind of amazing that I think black folks as a whole, you could kind of say our lives in America has always been hoping for a better future, you know. It's like everything we've done in America has, has been in the, in the quest of, 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 of the future being a better place. And, and then you have, you, we finally get to the place where we have an African-American president, which kind of made all of us feel like, man, maybe we're getting somewhere, right? Maybe, maybe there's some hope for this country. And then, the 
reality sets in. Exactly. And then reality <laughs> sets in. And then you get these other people who now want to go back to the Revolutionary War. Yeah. And they want to, you know, we want to progress and they want to regress. And, and, it's, and it's all about time. It's like, for them, the old days were the good old days. And, 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 the, and the good old days were a nightmare for us. And so, you know, that seems to me to be the big, the time travel thing is the problem we still have in America. We can't get these a whole group of people to kind of come into us today and not divorce the past from our experience now. And I think, I think it's been really frustrating for black folks and white folks who understand to kind of see this a bizarre thing going on where we're divorcing the past from problems now. And uh, it, it, it's, it's all part of, I guess, the continuation of this time travel. Uh, yes. Uh, West Studi. Uh, West Studi is in another film of mine called The Only Good Indian, and it's available on Netflix. and And uh, he's a he's great in the film. Uh, that's a very different film than this one, a drama uh, about Native Americans and boarding schools and all that stuff. And he's a very good friend, and just did it as a favor. Yes, sir. Yes, I just wanted to commend you and say that your film was very interesting and very important on a number of different levels. Thank you. As far as time travel is concerned, history is indeed time travel. And if you understand history and you study history, you know that it's uh, all relative in terms of time. But one very important thing I'd like to say is that if you don't know who you are or where you are in space and time, you are truly lost. Thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the audience, but I mean, I don't know if this, I, I see a glorious one. Yeah. 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 Yeah
you know, to me. And so when you, we kind of are raw and we kind of lay it all out and we don't really, you know, take, you know, we, we don't really apologize for that. And I grew up with Mel Brooks and I grew up with Richard Pryor and I grew up with, you know, all these people who the joke was, the joke should be funny and the joke should also teach you something, mm -hmm. you know. And that was the, the, the definition of a good joke was a joke that kind of expanded your understanding of life a little bit. And that's all we were really trying to do with them now. And that's kind of, people don't quite understand that as much as they used to. And so I think we just need to, to just, you know, do it, and I think we'll get used to it, used to it again. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Once um, I see the film, and I've seen quite, quite many of the films, the one thing that hits me and occurs to me, and I will answer uh, um, I think um, the young question of young uh, who answered the question about what uh, what uh, what um, um, section of the audience. Audience. audience you're hearing me to. It's really cross-generation. And it's really to get the cross generations of Americans to start thinking again about where you at, who you are, and why you why you're American, and what Americans stand for. I, I think I think that's kind of I think what we're trying to do more than anything, and we see it as really an American film. I think most of the movies we make are <coughs> movies that are kind of about the, the American experience. And uh, so I, I, would, I would definitely agree with that. <coughs> yes, sir. Um, after viewing the film, one line really sticks with me, and that was during the Black Student Union and the line of, well, why weren't the white people invited? Right. I just want to apply that to the context right. of the cinema right now. Sure. Um, I've only been to two screenings of this film festival. Uh, it's for my first time here. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Uh, lovely film festival. Welcome to, Can to, welcome to America. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just wanted to, to ask you, uh, the, the audiences that I've been to for my two screenings here have been predominantly African-American. Sure. I just want to ask you both, um, why do you think that you don't have a more multicultural audience in this? Do you believe that's an issue? And how would you try to go about solving that if you believe it's an issue for the Well, I will let Tony answer you. I'm, I'm just going to explain the context, the actual context where the scene where the cotton balls takes place. Okay. I'm, I'm a professor at, at Kansas University. And one time I was speaking at the University of Missouri, showing one of my other films, CSA, Confederate States of America. And when I was speaking there, there was a meeting going on about a, a, an incident that happened on campus where they put cotton balls in front of the black student union, the same actual thing that you see in the front. And so, so I, I didn't, I wasn't, I'm, I don't teach there, so I just kind of got to witness this meeting. And the thing that really struck me about it was, that it was a, it was kind of a notorious incident that happened. We heard about it at KU, and it was all around the Midwest, pretty much. And uh, and everybody that left the meeting, I noticed was was black. And I was going like. Well, this is certainly our problem, but it's majority white on that campus, like it is on most campuses, and this is their problem too, you know. But the fear of the corporate fear of bringing white people into the room and saying, "Okay, there was a horrible racist incident that happened out here, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about it." That corporate fear of the white the white students getting pissed off, feeling guilty. The black student getting mad at somebody, that whole fear of, of that kind of interaction, they're not going to do that. And, and to me, that, that incident is pretty much American life. You know, that, that every time the, Tra the Trayvon Martin deal is the, the best last example of it. You know, where you have black folks feel this way about it, certain other folks feel another way about it. And, and it's just, it's hard the corporate thing, and I call it the corporate thing because I think that's, it's about money why we're not talking to each other, I think. It's not political correctness, it's corporate correctness. You know, it's about money. And, and, and because people don't want to lose money and they don't want to have racial incidents because they lose money when that stuff happens. And so 
I think that's a big part of the problem. Uh, well, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, I think the obvious answer is that, you know, this is the Black Film Festival and so there are black people will come to it. But beside, beyond, but beyond that, um, I have a, I have, this is a, an example. I have an older white woman, uh, she, she's a friend of mine, and she was telling me about how she likes to donate to uh, these different uh, causes because she keeps saying she wants to help you people. And one of them is like a something for, for black youth, and one of them is for children who need mentorship, something like that. And she always talks about how she wants to donate because she wants to help them. She wants to help them. And that's really considerate of her. It really is. But on some level, even when I talk to her, it's the thing that we have to keep trying to um, take apart is the, 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 the desire to other, the, the need of uh, the practice of othering people, making it separate. So until we think about helping other people as helping ourselves, all of us, the combined unit of humanity, until we think of rather than you and us and them, then this won't seem so... <coughs> so strange and foreign and different and not for you to see. It'll be your story as well. It won't just be someone else's story you're watching. It'll be our story to see. Yes, sir. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, I, I think the one thing that was probably the most striking when my husband and I were watching was the idea of walking through the older neighborhood and uh, reliving the culture of the past. Uh, he and I have just purchased a single-family home in Bronzeville, and uh, we're constantly like, oh, it's coming back, it's coming back. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. we're excited about that, but we always look back and say, is it an issue of integration or is it a question of desegregation? So I was curious, is, was it a moment or an instance or something that made you say this is a component that needs to be incorporated within this film? Well, I, I, I you know, live in Lawrence, which is right outside Kansas City, and... Uh, uh, made a documentary a couple years back about the black hospitals that were in Kansas City. And, uh, and so I talked to a lot of people from the old neighborhoods about, you know, that time when, when it was the black hospital and the white hospital. And, um, and they talked a lot about, you know, when integration happened, you know, we integrated with whites, but whites didn't ing integrate with us. And, you know, and, and at that time, blacks had black hospitals, Black lawyers, black cab stands, black everything, because you, you couldn't you couldn't work with other folks, right? And so when 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 we gave that up, you know, they would tell me that it was integration was great, but then integration was we lost a great deal from integration, and uh, and so it's not against it's not it's not about not wanting to be with white people, it's about that we had structures of our own that we sacrificed to integrate, and the white structures didn't sacrifice to integrate with us. It's like the Jackie Robinson thing, which I'm so glad is mentioned in the movie, because Jack, we look at Jackie Robinson as a hero, which he was, you know, with, you know, he started something huge for us. But at the same time, that became the, the, the destruction of the Negro League. So it's, it, it's that double-sided coin of, of what we lose and the, what becomes sometimes the pretense of integration versus the reality. That's and you know, and you think about now if, I mean, I'm not familiar with that neighborhood, but if, if whites had integrated into that neighborhood instead of blacks just leaving that neighborhood, you wouldn't be rebuilding it now, probably. Exactly. Um, we got time yeah, one last question. question. I enjoyed this film. It um, um, started in the 30s. And, um, at that time, you know, blacks were portrayed in a certain manner in, in, in a lot of Hollywood movies. How do you feel about that in today's world? What, what do you think we could do to make our image um, more positive and, and to reflect the progress that many people are talking about? Well, that's not what you answered this to. We, we talked a lot about this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, I think there needs to be a, a bunch of different images, for one thing. I mean, the more different images, the better. <coughs> and that's, I think that's a big part of the problem. You remember a few years ago when the criticism about the Bill Cosby show and you know, that that wasn't a real image, and it's, to me, it's more about that, that's, it's not that that wasn't a real image, it's just that, you know, that's one image among hundreds of other images that should be on the screen. And the more, the more different and, and, and a variety of, of images people get to see, and, and young people get to grow up seeing, 
you know, we only saw certain things. We never saw, you know, when black folks, you know, I always tell my students, you know, how black people would call each other up and say, Nat King Cole's on TV, you know, and everybody would run home, you know. Uh, you know, how, how, how desperate we were to, to see somebody black on television, you know. And, and so, you know, that's still a bit of a problem because even though there's a lot more black people on TV now, obviously, most of those images are the same kind of images. And so you just need a, a wide variety of images and a wide variety of stories. And you need stories also that connect us back with the past so that we can understand a negative image today. So I think we see negative images today and people don't recognize them as negative images because they have no connection to their or origins. And so uh, that's a becoming, I think, a bigger and bigger problem. Uh, uh, the other day I did a, um, I was very fortunate to get a role on a, on a TV <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I, I had a very small part, right? But the part was a, uh, I was a, I was a thug who was shot up a four bullet hole. I had two lines. My lines were... I'm not supposed to tell you this, by the way. But my lines were, yes. But <laughs> you won't tell anyone. Okay. My lines were, get away from me and don't leave me here. Those were my two lines. Okay. Mm. And I spent an entire day, you know, filming this thing, covered in blood, thinking to myself, Am I letting down the race? What am I doing right now? And I think that this just goes to reaffirm what he's talking about, in the sense that it, it's it's about everything. It's about having representation. And then the fact that we're so married and so um, embedded in, in media and, and our relationship to the media, we need to see everything. We can't just see that. We can't deny that that's a part of life, but we can't only see that and expect to have role models in society, you know. So it's, a, it's, it's a, I think it's a continual grind, and it's a, it's a generational grind, too, that we're always trying to do better, and we're always trying to get a fairer shake, whether that's in, the, in our personal lives, in our friends' eyes, or in our public lives. And I, just to, just to, you know, it's the fact that I, that Tosin as an actor um, is introspective enough to be debating this is a very good thing. Because, you know, yes, 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 yes. Because, because that, that is the thing that I think will make performers, filmmakers, all of us a lot better as we move as we move forward because it is it's gonna always be a constant struggle. I mean the thug image now it may be a, a negative image. Tomorrow it's gonna be something else. And it always changes, it always evolves, it always you know comes around in some other weird way. And so uh, so uh, thank you for Thank you guys.